Welcome to the First Player Token Podcast, a short podcast for folks who enjoy playing board games with family and friends. I'm your host, Derek Bruff. In this episode, we travel to a beautiful island off the coast of Greece, famous for its white and blue buildings in Santorini. You've probably seen pictures of Santorini. It's that Greek island with the whitewashed buildings topped by the bright blue domes looking out over the Aegean Sea. It's just ridiculously beautiful. And those buildings are practical from what I've read. The whitewash keeps the houses cooler in the hot sun, and the buildings are low and square to manage the strong winds and chance of earthquakes. According to myths, the island was given to the Greek argonaut Euphemus, a human son of Poseidon, by the Greek god Triton, another son of Poseidon. Both the mythology and the architecture of the island of Santorini blend together in the 2016 board game Santorini, a charming and puzzly game designed by Gordon Hamilton and published by Roxley Games. In Santorini, players take on the role of builders in ancient Greece. Each player has two workers, which they move around a 5x5 grid of squares, creating taller and taller buildings. The building pieces look like the buildings in the real Santorini, each one square at the base and completely white, just like the whitewashed homes on the Greek island. There are level 1, level 2, and level 3 pieces, and they stack nicely to create little towers. The goal is to move one of your workers to the top of a three-story tower, or to trap your opponents where they can't move at all by surrounding them with structures. Each turn, you select one of your workers and move them to an adjacent square and then build in a square adjacent to their new location, either starting a new building with a level one piece or adding a level to an existing structure. So I move, build, and I can smash if I want. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm gonna move. And I'll build here. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Didn't see anything. Okay. <laughs> Um, I know what I'm doing here, and you're helping me right now. You can go up one level, right? But you can't go up two. Mm-hmm. You can always fall as far as you want. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to build right here. This move and build mechanic is simple, but creates all kinds of tactical decisions. You might want to build a third story on the tower next to you, for instance. But since your opponent moves next, you know she'll hop on top and win the game. And if she can't move there herself, she can top that third level with a bright blue dome, preventing anyone from moving there for the rest of the game. The trick is to set yourself up to move to a three-story tower without letting your opponent cut you off. Or, as I mentioned, it's possible to block another player in where they can't move, in which case they're out of the game. The workers can go down any number of levels when they move, but they can only go up one level at a time. That's how you play the introductory game of Santorini, but that's just for learning the move and build mechanic. The game is really meant to be played where each player has their own unique abilities, as determined by the cards that come with the game, each representing some helping friendly character from Greek mythology. If you play with the Hermes card, for instance, your workers can move as far as you like each turn, but only if they don't move up or down. Demeter lets your worker build twice in the same turn, as long as they build on different squares. And the Minotaur lets you knock an opponent out of their square and take over their space, assuming they have a space on the other side to land in. Those are a few of the simple powers. More advanced powers add all kinds of complexity, like Persephone, who forces opponents to move up a level if they can, or Ares, who lets you destroy certain building blocks, or Circe, who lets you use an opponent's power if their workers aren't adjacent to each other. I'm going to move and build okay. and smash. Great. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, Ares, god of war. Okay. <laughs> And build. The character cards are colorfully and charmingly illustrated by David Forrest and Lena Cassette. 
and it's the character cards that bring out the game's theme, with each card's ability somehow tied to the mythological character on the card, like the fleet of foot Hermes, or the bullish Minotaur, or the enchantress Circe, known from Homer's Odyssey, who likes to isolate her foes. I know a lot of kids get really into Greek myths for a spell, and those kids will love Santorini. That's in fact why I purchased it for my oldest years ago, when she was on a Percy Jackson kick. And there are some deep cuts in this game, like Hestia, goddess of hearth and home, and Hypnos, god of sleep, and Limus, goddess of famine. Her power is that your opponent's workers can't build on the spaces next to your workers because they're too hungry. I like that you can teach Santorini with some of the simpler character powers, and then, once players understand the basics, you can try out some of the more complex or subtle powers. This makes it possible to ease younger players into learning the game. In education, we call this concept scaffolding. And given all the different powers, the game has so much replayability. With 30 gods, goddesses, and assorted mythological characters in the base game, there are 435 different head-to-head matchups possible. In fact, when we opened this game a few years ago, my girls and I played eight times in a row trying out the different character powers. And build. And build, build, build. Okay. I'm going to move. I'll build over here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Move. Yeah. Oh. Thanks for helping me. Ah. <laughs> Santorini can handle between two and four players. The two player game feels most like chess, although much simpler and quicker. Three player is probably my favorite, since you can try to manipulate other players into doing your dirty work. The four player game puts players on two teams of two, and that works pretty well too. Playtime can vary between 10 and 30 minutes, depending on the player count and which character powers you're using. That's why we could play eight times in a row that one night. The box says the game is for ages eight and up, but if your six or seven year old is good at tactical thinking, they'll enjoy Santorini. There's really no reading required as long as someone at the table can explain the character powers. The game is very visual, and the chunky building pieces are very satisfying to play with for both younger and older players. I'm really wanting that. (laughs) So, I can go there. I don't want to. And then... I already know what you're gonna do. I can build. And I won't smash this time. Okay. <laughs> can I do a dumb from right here? Yes, you can. Yes! <laughs> Go. So you don't want me to win there? Yes, I don't. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> if I went there, I would actually win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you like Santorini, you should check out the expansion, Santorini Golden Fleece. It adds 30 more gods and goddesses, including some super obscure Greek characters, as well as 10 hero cards. Each hero gives you a special ability, but you can only use it once during the game. And there's a new play mode featuring the Golden Fleece, which comes in the form of a yellow ram figure you place on the board. Players don't have any special powers, unless one of their workers is adjacent to the ram. Then they get the power of the character card selected for the fleece at the start of the game. There's also Santorini New York, which abandons the Greek theme entirely in favor of building skyscrapers in New York City. I haven't tried that because, well, that's a little weird. And because the base game and the expansion have so much replayability. I mean, building skyscrapers in New York City makes sense as a theme, but I prefer the original Santorini and its relaxing whitewashed buildings topped by bright blue domes. I can almost imagine I'm there, looking out over the Aegean Sea. That's it for this episode of the First Player Token Podcast. See the show notes for more info and photos of Santorini, as well as a link to the podcast's Facebook group. Oh, and we have swag now. 
Well, it's a coffee mug with our logo, but I have one and it's pretty sweet. I've been your host, Derek Bruff. Thanks for listening. Now it's time to play some games. Move. And build. And smash. (laughs) You're making me angry, man. (laughs) Ah, I can't get there in time. Move. (laughs) (laughs) You've built that like four times. (laughs) Oh. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs>